Find the cats. George. Hello, my fellow sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is my mustache parakeet, Picasso. And we want to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday, except Picasso doesn't. He wants to leave. Don't you, Picasso? So I'm not going to bother him. Okay, I'll just do this without you, Picasso. So I want to welcome you by myself to eight birds that I think work great in an apartment. And these, by the way, are in no particular order. Let's get right to it. Number one. The first bird that I chose as a good apartment bird is none other than the love bird. Now keep in mind, when choosing a bird for an apartment, there are noisy birds and there are loud birds. For example, I would characterize my macaw Rocky as loud, but definitely not noisy. He doesn't scream all the time, but when he does, it can give you a little bit of a chill to the bone. I may describe some of these birds as noisy and some as loud. Actually, I won't be describing any of these birds as loud because they are perfect for your apartment. Back to number one, lovebirds. Lovebirds may be a tiny bit noisy. They like to have a little bit of chatter every now and then, but they are definitely not loud, making them great little birds for your apartment. Now, lovebirds are not great talkers. They may be able to do some noises like microwaves and doorbells and things like that. That doesn't mean that your bird never will talk, but generally, lovebirds are not known for their talking abilities. And although you should never buy a bird because you're expecting a bird to talk, a lovebird would definitely not be in that category if you are looking for a talking bird but they are fun little busybodies with so much personality and you would love the companionship of a lovebird. Now, a lot of people think that lovebirds need to be in pairs and that's because they're called lovebirds when in actual fact, you might bond so much better with one single bird than you would if you give your bird a companion. Of course, if you find two paired lovebirds, you definitely don't want to separate them. But if you are looking for a bird to interact and bond with you, you have to treat lovebirds just like you would with any other parrot and start with one bird first. And if you do that, you can have such a deep, wonderful bond with a lovebird. Because lovebirds are noisy but not loud, I would give them a number two on the loud scale. One being the quietest and five being the loudest. <laughs> The next bird that is great for an apartment is the budgie. Budgies are such cute, little, playful, little birdies. And what's amazing about budgies is that although they aren't necessarily known to be great talkers, some budgies have excellent vocabularies. It's amazing. Again, you would never get a budgie because you're looking for a talking bird. But what's so interesting about budgies is that when they do talk, I've heard them say so much and it's always really surprising and fascinating. So yes, you could get a little talking budgie. Budgies are very, very playful and extremely active. What I really like about budgies is that they're not as destructive as a lot of their parrot friends. So if you are worried about your bird chewing up a lot of things in the house, you won't have to worry so much about that with a budgie. On the loud scale, I would give a budgie about a one. Your neighbor probably will not hear your bird. Your budgie will probably not be disturbing anybody, if at all. The next bird that is great for an apartment is the parrotlet. The parrotlets are such little birds with such big personality. You cannot go wrong with this curious little bird. They may say some words or phrases, which is really, really cute. But again, these are not the kind of birds that you get because you're depending on your parrotlet to talk. 
One thing about them that's important to keep in mind though is that they're a lot more feisty than budgies. So if you have kids, it might be better to go with a budgie rather than a parrotlet because a budgie in this case might be a lot easier for your kid to bond with. Every situation is different and every bird is different and every person is different. So if you have bonded to a specific bird, well, there's your answer. You don't need me to tell you. Parrotlets are amazing companions and on a loud scale, I would give them about a one. So if you are living in an apartment and looking for a bird, this is a really great bird to look into. Next, we have oh, one of my favorites, and you guys know it, the cockatiel. A cockatiel was my first bird, Dooley. He was a yellow cockatiel. I loved him. I felt like he was a great family bird. I got him when I was seven years old. I bonded extremely well to Dooley. On a loud scale, I would give him like between a one or a two. If you're looking for a talking bird, again, a cockatiel is probably not where it's at. A lot of cockatiels can whistle and sing. There's so many great videos of cockatiels whistling and singing. Mine didn't. Mine my bird just screamed but knew exactly which bus was mine when I was coming home from school. So much personality really took over the house, but honestly, I think every bird is going to do that if you want me to be frank with you. So overall, I would say great apartment bird, really good with kids. They can definitely bond to one family member, but they can also be well socialized if you let them. Dooley was exceptionally socialized with the entire family, but when my brother and I went away to camp and came back, he was much more bonded to my mother. So you always want to keep that in mind that they always have the opportunity to become bonded to one person. Dooley enjoyed head scratches and I loved giving head scratches to my bird and snuggling with Dooley. So as you can see, I'm a little biased and I have a lot of passion for cockatiels, but all the birds that I previously mentioned are amazing birds too. Cockatiels are really popular. I would give them a loud scale of one to two because they will scream if need be, but not as loud as Conyers, which is our next bird of choice. Out of the Conyers, I went with the green cheek Conyers. They're smaller than a lot of their fellow Conyers and a lot less noisy. On the noise scale, I would give them about a two, maybe a two plus. A lot of people describe these green cheek Conyers as little clowns. They're extremely playful. They love to do little acrobatics. I enjoy Conyers. You know that my sister enjoys Conyers as well. Conyers can be really good for children, especially if well socialized. Green cheek Conyers can learn some words, but again, I wouldn't depend on this specific Conyer for a great vocabulary. They're not exactly known for that. Also very important to know that green cheek conures can become one person birds. If you have a family, you wanna remember that and socialize your bird exceptionally well, which takes a constant effort because birds really do bond to one person very quickly. So you would have to be consciously active about engaging with your bird and every family member that wants to be involved with the bird. Conures are extremely affectionate and loving. They love head scratches and they love love and they love snuggling. Great apartment bird. This is a bird that a lot of parrot owners describe as very quiet, especially when trained right. Now, don't get me wrong, they do have a little bit of a high-pitched squeak, but with all birds, if you're able to interact with them and socialize them well, that is behavior that is easily taken care of. So when these birds are happy, they tend to be pretty quiet, and that is the Pionis. What a lot of people really like about this bird is that they can be very independent. I know it's so tempting to have a cuddly bird, but sometimes a bird that just doesn't mind doing his own thing can be really refreshing, especially for those of you who know about Velcro birds and cockatoos that wanna be on you all the time. So this can be a really great bird for somebody who lives in an apartment and has a little bit of work to do, maybe works from home, 
home and can spend a lot of time with their bird. One other amazing thing about these birds is that they're easily socialized with an entire family, which makes them great for kids. So whereas some birds get attached to one person, this is a lovely bird that can be friends with the entire family. Something to really think about if you do have kids and you do have other people in your house. Because as you guys know, some people take it very personally when a bird doesn't like them. These parrots can learn a few words. They may even have a few phrases. They do have cute little raspy voices, not like the African gray where they might actually sound like you. These guys sound like a bird, which is totally cute and they're totally understandable. If you are looking for a bird that speaks, you may get quite a few phrases out of the Pionis. They are known to talk but they may not have the largest vocabulary compared to other parrots. What's also really cute about these birds is that they have so much personality. It's like you're getting a really large parrot in a smaller bird, which can be really fun for those of you looking for that acrobatic type bird. They can be affectionate. They may not be as cuddly as they are affectionate, but again, don't let that deter you from this amazing bird because sometimes, especially Especially if you've never had a bird before, you'll learn that a little bit of independence can go a long way and be really refreshing for you. So if you're looking for an apartment bird, I would not pass up the chance to check these guys out. On a noise scale, I would give them a two because, because if they are trained well, they probably won't scream your house down. Now that brings us to another bird that I personally had in my apartment and I thought he was perfect. Unfortunately, he left like legit, flew out of the room and downstairs and then I had to help him as he begged me to let him into Jersey's house so that he could sleep next to her. So I did, even though I was in the middle of making this video. And that bird would be my mustache parakeet Picasso, which is very similar to the ringneck. So I think we can also include the ringneck in this category. Although mustache parakeets are much quieter than ringneck parakeets. Now my mustache parakeet Picasso, you guys see him, how chill he is. He rarely screams. I would consider him maybe a two or three on the noise scale. Okay, that's no, maybe like a two minus because Picasso, when he screams, it can be loud, but honestly, he does not scream often. I mean, in all the hours and all the times that we've been making videos, you haven't even heard him say much at all. That's evidential that he would be a great apartment bird. He's not exactly the most cuddly bird. He doesn't enjoy head scratches and such. He does let me pet him in one direction on his feathers and he does snuggle up with me. So I really enjoy Picasso and I think he is a wonderful, apartment bird if you are looking into mustache parakeets. Remember, mustache parakeets are illegal in some states, so check your state laws before you get a mustache parakeet. This brings me to the last bird that I think is a pretty decent apartment bird. I thought I should include this parrot because not a lot of people include them on the apartment list, but I honestly think they may not be that bad because I also had an African gray in an apartment. I would describe African grays as probably a three plus, maybe a three on the noise scale out of a five because they're noisy, but they're not loud. Now don't get me wrong, if they hear something loud, they can imitate it. So if you have a cockatoo and then you bring home an African gray, the African gray can learn cockatoo. The African gray can also learn hammering and whatever other construction sites might be going on outside your house. If your African gray hears that, when the construction workers leave, it will not feel like they have left. It will feel like someone is hammering forever. So there are things like that with African gray, but they don't scream 
More so, they talk and chatter all day long. They do have a lot of quiet moments, but I enjoy the talking of an African Grey. I always find it welcoming. I always find it funny. But if you need to have absolute peace and quiet in your house, if you're somebody that films or I don't know what else you could be doing that you need it quiet, an African Grey is not for you because they do enjoy their little chatter time and practicing. So I love African Greys. I'm keeping them on the list. For those of you that are wondering about larger parrots and which one might be good for apartment living. They're not cuddly birds, but they do cuddle. Some of them do cuddle. Cody, you've seen him cuddle up to me. It happens. George wasn't that type of bird. I definitely have had an African Grey in an apartment and it was wonderful. It worked out great for me. So those are the eight birds that I think work really well in an apartment. I went over a little bit which birds might also be good with kids. If you guys are interested specifically about which birds might be good with children, let me know in the comments and I will also make that video for you guys. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment on this video. Don't forget to follow me on socials. My Instagram is at Marlene McCohen. I love when you guys visit me there and watch my stories story time. And of course, don't forget to get your Jersey merch. It's doing so well. And Sniffers t-shirts, I'll put the link below. Jersey and her little donut. Oh my God. It's like the cutest thing. So don't forget to check out the merch. Join Parrot Station on Facebook for any questions or any stories you want to tell about your birds. Remember everybody, be kind. Don't bully. Be good to your YouTubers. And thank you guys so, so much for joining in today. Please subscribe. I love you guys. Bye. Hello, my fellow snippers. My name is Marlene McCohen. Hello, my fellow snippers. My name is Marlene McCohen. And hello, my fellow snippers. My name is Marlene McCohen. And this is Picasso, my mustache parakeet. And we want to welcome you to Parent Tip Tuesday. For today's Parent Tip Tuesday, we are going to talk about the eight parrots. For, to for today's 